So it has been reported that Steve Macklin's contract is running out fairly soon. I don't remember the exact timetable it gave, but it's um, it's a few months out. There was a, a rumor that Sean Rossat put out there that he was going to let us know someone's contract running out with TNA. And, of course, he left people hanging for a few hours before he actually told people who it was. And uh, I was I was kind of hoping it was kind of a nothing uh, just a nothing contract, a nothing wrestler. But it was Steve Macklin, the guy who is one of my top three, probably my top one in his company right now. So I'm a little disappointed because in our uh, in my in our brace for impact chat on Twitter, when the news came out, someone was leaving. I said, oh, well, whoever it is they're or it didn't say they were leaving, but it said their contract was running out. Uh, I said, well, whoever it is is leaving. And then we get Steve Macklin. And after the news comes out, he's he's um, promoting, you know, his open indie dates in, in May going forward, which maybe he does all the time. But I, I don't usually pick up on that if he does. But I just thought it was interesting timing that he was letting us know he would be a free agent pretty much. And um, I'm I'm a little worried about it because I do think, you know, I've been talking about that first domino and the first domino I, I meant is more so someone who wanted to leave, which we may get to that a little bit later. But the first contract that looks like it's running out, I just don't see that person, that guy or girl re-signing. I don't see them staying. And we're in a situation here where Steve Macklin's wife has left. I don't think left on the best terms in the world. Uh, I wouldn't say bad terms, but just kind of the rumor mill that's out there. I don't know how um, how amicable it was. Like, I think I think they picked up her option similar to what they did to Josh Alexander when she was kind of looking to go elsewhere. And then you you know the last several months of Deanna's run, you see her taking L's to just about everybody. I think I beat her at one point, and. You know, this is this is the guy uh, wed to her. And he was in a similar, I don't want to say a similar situation, but he never got the run that I think a lot of people expected. There's many of us who wanted the run. Um, when he won that world title, that was one of my, you know, happier days as a TNA fan in a while. And I thought he was going to have a real legit run. I thought... I thought he was their closest thing to EC3. And by that, I just mean someone you plug from WWE obscurity that you rebrand them to the point that you don't even associate them with what they used to do before. And, you know, he wins the title. He does not get a good run. I mean, maybe six weeks. I think one title defense, maybe two, maybe, maybe there's one on, on impact. But he he just he never really got the run that I think just people expected. I think you know that he came off he was undefeated for several months, and you know they really played that up. And then he just kind of lost, and then he just kind of I don't want to say he kept losing, but there was no real momentum going on here. It was really disappointing. Uh, it was probably the most frustrating I've been at the booking of a wrestler in TNA in quite some time, because I really thought he was a, a missed opportunity, someone who could have been at the top of the card, legit main eventer. And they, I mean, they used him as a, at the top of the card, you know, uh, uh, it's not like he was, he was at the bottom of the card. He was on the pre-show for hard to kill, which was really odd, uh, taking on rich Swan. And, you know, they try to, church it up is the first match of the TNA era. I mean, this was probably their least watched pre-show in years because it wasn't on YouTube. It was done uh sign up for our new app, our new TNA Plus, and I can't imagine a lot of people saw it. I got to see it live. It was awesome. But he just he's always deserved better. I I when he lost, I wasn't watching live when he lost to Alex Shelley. But I saw people online losing their minds about it. And I said, and then someone messaged me and they're like, Steve Macklin lost the title. And I said, no fucking way. 
I, I there's only been a couple times I've really been pissed at booking in the last several years because I don't I don't take it all like too seriously to where I let it ruin my day. <laughs> there are some people who, you know, look at the the Cody movement really let it really let wrestling ruin their day. It was when Rich Swan lost to Kenny Omega, and it was when Steve Macklin lost the title here. I was, I was really, I couldn't believe it. Like, I really thought I was not awake. I was asleep. I was dreaming. I said, there is no way that dude beat Steve Macklin with his yup. I was like, there's no way. And he went on, you know, I'm thinking, okay, he's a transitional champion. Macklin's going to get the title back. This dude went on to have the third longest title run in TNA history. And I'm just like, why could it have Macklin had that spot? I just didn't get it. It really, really, really upset me. Uh, there was the Bound for Glory, uh, the Call Your Shot gauntlet, where it looks like he's going to win, and all of a sudden, um, Bully Ray gets a clean win on him. That was frustrating. Uh, that was maybe the third time I've been kind of upset in the last couple of years. And then he had the the feud going with Scott Demore for a little bit to where uh, I think he was injured, right? Didn't he get injured? So he was taken out of that. But there was the mixed tag they were going to do, which was interesting. You know, him him paired up with Bully Ray. That was That was some interesting stuff. But it just seemed like he wasn't buried by any means, but it just seemed like it just never got off the ground. And I don't see why it would now. I do think TNA is the place for him. I, I really do. I do not see him um, thriving in AEW, and it's not because of him or his talent. It's just that company. Uh, you have to be a real, real major name at this point to to go over there because Tony is not – Tony's taken the, the, the big-time uh, WWE retreads, you know, the, the older wrestlers, the big names – uh, he's just, he's very far away from building his own stars. Like he was at one point. And I, I just cannot see, um, his style of wrestling working over there to where Tony's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to feature him heavily. Now I think he's good. I think he's great. You know, he's very, um, you know, he's slimmer than when he showed up. Uh, I've always enjoyed the gimmick. I've always enjoyed the promo. I've always enjoyed his matches. I've always cared what he was doing and and what just everything about him. I've always cared. Met him in real life. Couldn't have been nicer. Uh, it was very special for me to meet him and Diana. As a matter of fact, there's still my my Twitter um, header, a picture of them with the uh, with their titles. But it's just the whole run is just disappointing and. When they're when Anthem is talking about, hey, we're cutting budget, you think they're gonna re-sign the first big free agent of theirs that's that's coming available? I, I just don't see that. Um last time they said we're cutting budget, they they got rid of EC3, they got rid of James Storm, they got rid of uh Bobby Lashley. I'm trying to think if there was anyone else in that in that area of talent. But they just got rid of everyone. They just sliced people, they slashed people, and they said, Okay, build new stars. We're gonna sign people from Lucha, Lucha Underground, build them. So this guy being at the top of the card, I just don't see them doing it. I don't see them re-signing him. And I don't think he wants to, to be honest. But I do think this is the place for him. But the company has to commit to him at the same time. And I don't know if that's going to happen. I have no idea. But this is the place. I'm very disappointed because when that time comes and he does leave, um, it's going to be hard for me to really get into the show because he's one of the he's one of the few really keeping me excited just because of my level of fandom for them. I, I probably enjoy a lot of the TNA roster, most of the people, but as far as the ones who I'm, I'm very excited to see what they do from week to week, you know, he's, he's in a small handful of guys and girls and I'm, I'm deeply concerned. I'm deeply concerned that the Deanna stuff behind the scenes was not smooth. And by default, he will, he will leave. Maybe he just does the Indies. I don't know. But uh, I really do not want to see him leave. I think this was would have been a great long-term home for him. I think he should have had a very long world title run and ultimately face Josh Alexander one day in a title match. But that's just not what we got, unfortunately.